morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade and this is How to App on iOS. Welcome to the rant number six, Uncensored, with Pete Johns from Studio Live Today. Howdy diddly diddly do. I hope you're all doing well. If you're watching on Facebook, I don't know what to do for you. You need help. Uh, come over to YouTube at youtube.com slash Jade Star, or you can go to the website at how to app on iOS dot com or you can watch the show live on twitch.tv slash how to app on ios not doing an interview today what's kind of an interview it's a hang we haven't done a rant since christmas so without further ado you know him as the guy from studio live today who's uh you could call him a fence sitter you could call him a fantastic musician you know he's just an all-round good guy unless he's on clubhouse and bullying me I can see him nodding in the green room. <laughs> uh, so, are you ready, folks? Grab hold of your ankles, because this is Uncensored, The Rant, and I'd like to welcome to the show, Pete Johns. How are you today, Pete? My, My ass is so, so sore from all that fence sitting, but apart from that, I'm doing exceptionally well. Awesome. It's good to see you. I only just saw you about you. Uh, 10 minutes ago in your own stream. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was, I was talking all about, about all the new Apple, Apple shininess, shininess, which I'm sure we'll touch on here today. today. You know, they're, they're attacking, attacking our wallets, wallets again and making us buy all this stuff. stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, good, it's good times. times indeed. Let's say hello to folks in the chat. Uh, first off the bat, hey, thanks. I have an idea for the super chat. You are awesome. Starts off the show with a bang. Uh, thank you, my friend. It Without, Without like folks like I have an idea, idea, I just want to say uh, we, we'd end up looking a bit, a bit more, more like this. this. I disappear completely. <laughs> oh, there you go. I like, I like that one. one. I was about to say how bad Skype's, Skype's green, green screen ability, ability is, but uh, when I put my hand up like there, I could just go away. Oh my god. Uh, I found my favourite new thing. Sorry, I had to, I had wrong settings on. Sorry about that. I had echoing on. That should be fixed, folks. Oh. It was my fault. Um, oh, okay. Pete should be fixed now. Thanks, guys, in the I'm chat. Fixed. I'm not echoing. <laughs> no, it was I'm my fault. Echoing. I had a. No, that's echo. I have a setting for when I'm solo, and and there's a setting for when I'm um, duo. So it should be fixed. I just forgot to click it. I checked all the other boxes, and Pete disappeared. <laughs> that is the greatest thing yeah, I've ever seen. It's. I had to do the same because I would jump straight from my stream. There's a button on my mixer here where I go from uh, my mix to a mix minus when I'm doing interviews with other people. And if I don't do that, all we do is hear just a constant feedback echo. So if you can give us a thumbs up and make sure that I'm all good now, that would be just dandy. And then meanwhile, I'm just going to play with this and disappear again. <laughs> Disappearing feedback. And I'm in Doug's room. <laughs> yeah, okay, and I'm in your room. <laughs> this is We're just confusing the crap out of everybody. <laughs> uh, so I did say hello. So Ed B, SM Borthwick, uh, who else? Benedict Stewart, Tom Rochelle. Thanks, Tom, for one of our awesome moderators here. Uh, Goran Larson. Who else is here? Uh, Russ. Um, uh, Doctor. Oh, 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 Doctor's Orders is here as well. Um, Gary Hobbs. Uh, Rebecca, hey Rebecca, thanks for becoming a patron today. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw that. So thank you. You're going to have some fun in our live streams. Um, and yeah, if you ever do want to, I can just click a button and do the ad. That's really cool. Sai is here as well. Uh, who else? As I scroll down desperately trying to. Pete Johns is in the chat. Uh, <laughs> who else? Ed Zielinski, Joe's here, Kiss Kiss, can't do the sound effect today, Joey Helpish, Darren Daniluk, uh, Ed B, Ed Zielinski covered, uh, you two, the two Eds, uh, Michael Zeland, Billy Breeze, um, what else have I got, getting towards the bottom, I'm getting there, Valium FM, um, I think that's it. Andy Goldsby, hello to you. Joe I think Glenn. There's too many people. There's so many I think people. about half of you may have to leave. Yeah. There's too many people here. I'm getting a bit intimidated. <laughs> Wait, Not in those shoes. We'll we'll get to you guys because we're going to ask some questions today as well. So mm. thank you all for being here. Um, I'm just going to do this because we need a little bit of background music, I do believe. So let's turn this Ooh. down and let's get a bit of smooth. Ooh. A bit of Pete Johns in the background, yeah? All good. So, let's kick off today by, obviously, we need to talk about the Apple event, yeah? Yeah. 
Right. We do. And I know you just talked about all the products and all that jazz and if people are going to get it or not. So I, I really... Uh, are you going to get one, Pete? What are you going to get? Are you going to get What am I going to get? Yeah. I'm getting air tags. That's that, that's all I'm committing to at this point. I, I'm getting air tags just because I've been waiting so long that they've they, they've won. Their marketing of just waiting, making us wait two and a half years to actually launch a product that they've been talking about for that time. Uh, I'll buy them. Uh, I, I will eventually buy a new iPad Pro. I'm not going to jump into it. I'll probably do the same as I did with the Mac M1 and wait for all of the bleeding edge people to buy it on launch day, review it, tell me that it's all that it's cracked up to be or not, and then uh, consider my next move with that because, uh, yeah, it is, it, it is, it'll it probably be a tax time thing. So here, for those that don't know here in Australia, uh, our tax year goes to the end of June. So I would imagine that around the July mark. So I won't be, won't be jumping off, won't be uh, doing it with all the, the bleeding edge folks, but eventually I'll consider that. From a Mac point of view, I want that keyboard. I, uh, I have the Mac Mini and I want the keyboard with the Touch ID. And I know Joey Helpish was saying in my chat he wants it too. Uh, it just, yeah, typing passwords is so 2018 and I don't want to type passwords anymore. So that's me. What about you, Jay? What are you buying? I'm going to buy an iPad Pro. Nice. Um, why am I going to buy an iPad Pro? I'm going to get an AirTag as well. Just one so uh, I can stalk people, uh, randomly throw nice. one in somebody's bag, even though like, you can't do that just for fun. Well. Uh, uh, so I'm Good to try. going to get an iPad Pro because um, the the option of 16 gigabytes is way too exciting, and um, yeah, mm. I, I think it, it, that's the game changer. And I think um, a lot of people are missing really what's going on underneath this event. Everyone's so dazzled by the shiny things that mm -hmm. there is a clear roadmap, in my opinion, of course, that I can see happening. Um, and and just like looking at the screen here, you can see this photo, which seems to be the way they're going advertising the iPad Pro. If you go yeah. over and have a look at the Mac, funny that they look pretty much <laughs> the same, don't they? Same kind of uh, little little arm holding it. It seems like there's a consistent theme here going on with their iPads. Yep. No, it is. Uh, it, it will be that way that they've been set. Like the the iPad ad from three years ago, which is like the kid playing with his iPad, and then oh, what's what computer are you using there, son? He's like, what's a computer? And it's like, yeah, that, that they will clearly have been trying to go down that path of replacing the computer. So they did it firstly by making the iPad separate with iPad OS, which made it more of a desktop experience. They then launched the Magic Keyboard and keyboard and mouse support with iOS 13, which made it more of a desktop experience. And now we're getting an M1 chip, which is their desktop system on a chip in an iPad, which is, guess what? going to make it more of a desktop experience so yeah it's been pretty clear for the last three years that apple have been working towards this amalgamation of desktop mobile computing and what you use on an ipad and an iphone and this is going to be exciting i said i said in my stream just now if you're a poker player this is you've seen the flop and you're just going to wait for the turn in the river and i reckon at wwdc they're going to reveal those final couple of cards and then you're just going to go wow okay it's on now it's all happening yeah yeah, look, uh, <laughs> last year when they released the M1 Max, uh, people, look, and myself included, we all got excited going, ooh, we're going to have the apps across the devices. And yes, it's going to happen. That is definitely going to be a thing. I think a lot of people have been confused by, because I see a lot of people writing uh, all these editorials and stuff saying, there's going to be Mac OS on the iPad. And that is completely tits up wrong. It's uh, it's they've got it completely fucked up there. I think the Mac is going to become iOS. That is where we are heading. It's already looking like iOS, and there's a reason why the new iMacs have very little gigabytes for RAM. They're very low end. It's the same with the the Mac Pro and the Mac um, Air that they released last year. There's a reason why these are very low powered devices because this is a two year transition from Intel to the M1 and they are they're testing the water they're putting out these low end Macs for people who are just consumers to dip their toe in they've released a new iPad that is above most of these Macs that these new Macs that they have and then the next lot of Macs next year will be back to the usual standard because we'll be at that two year point and everything will be up to 32 gigs of RAM on the M1 chip. They'll be your high powered devices and then you'll have your accompanying iPad Pro at 16 gigabytes if you want the terabyte or two terabyte and everything will be universal. Everything will be uniform and 
it's just it just makes sense what's going on yeah and i think you're right though it's not going to be just you know mac because people are thinking well how could mac os work on a tablet we saw microsoft fail with this by trying to put windows on tablets and it took them windows 10 on a tablet's okay now because they finally got there but the first 10 years of that were just an absolute nightmare but i i think that it's going to move towards and i'm going to call it apple os so i think mac os and ios will, will be gone yep. there'll be aos and it'll be apple os across everything everything will run m1 everything will be system on a chip with at least eight gigabytes of ram so they can create all the universal apps in the yep. world that they know because it's the same chip they don't have to worry about clock speeds they don't have to worry about any of that other performance issue they know it's got the m1 they know the minimum specs of every device they sell are exactly the same and then they can develop an operating system that's going to be compatible across all your touchscreen devices and all of your Mac devices and work seamlessly and integrate seamlessly. And we saw that in Big Sur. All the changes they made in Big Sur were to make Mac OS more like iOS and iPad OS to get people like me used to it. I would not have bought a Mac OS running Catalina. That thing was horrible and just watching videos about it made me have anxiety attacks. So it wasn't until they went M1 and Big Sur that I was ready for Mac OS because it is so much like iOS. And once everything is on the M1 with Apple OS in 2022, it's just going to be a, you know, it's they've won. They've won at this point. I don't yeah. know what any other company can do. And I know people say you pay the Apple tax, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, you're an Apple fanboy, all of that stuff. And I said the same things as well. I, I'm, I'm proof that a 30-plus year PC user can get a Mac and just swap like that. I, I'm not going back now. My productivity on the M1 has been at least 50%, if not 100% better than my productivity on a PC. And the integration with my iPad and my iPhone now means that I am 100% bought into this arch architecture and this infrastructure. And whether you like that or not, it's the reality of where I'm at. And you can, but the, again, the beautiful part about a capitalist society, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Yeah. Go and get an Android device, <laughs> go and use a Windows PC. I'm not telling anyone what they need to do or what they should do. I'm just saying for me as a creator, this is where it's at. And for all the years I told people that used Apple that you don't need Apple and you're overpaying for, for old outdated hardware, I was probably right then. I think if I'm making that statement now, I'm kind of wrong because the prices are comparable and the performance, even though it's all integrated, which we were always told was bad, is actually better than the comparable Intel chip. So that, that's where we're at in my, in my opinion, in my experience. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And, you know, a lot of people complain and sit there and say, look, Apple step, jumped the gun with a lot of things like the headphone jack. You know, and sure, we all go, hey, the headphone jack, it's a bummer and all that kind of stuff. But other companies end up following suit. You know, the same with closed devices. Remember when you could get a, a Samsung Galaxy uh, and um, did I say Samson? Samson. Samson. <laughs> Samsung. That's, that's right. Samsung. People call Samsung yeah. Samsung. They're like, oh, you got a Samsung before, mixer. That's cool. Before like, they cut Samsung. their hair off. <laughs> no, so uh, with a Samsung um, Galaxy used to you know, be, used to be able to take off the back and change the battery. And everyone was like, oh, that's why I'm staying with Android because you can remove the battery and you've got more power. As soon as um, Apple, uh, you know, they copied Apple, they closed off their devices as well. So Apple yeah. are leaders in that respect. But where Apple really lead by example, and they, I know it sucks and a lot of people get pissed off about this, they hold back there are things that they, uh, they they jump forward with but with things like merging the ios and mac os they've sat back they've let microsoft shoot themselves in the dick a hundred times because you know that is an absolute debacle um google have tried to integrate things and and apple have sat there and realized they don't need to release a touchscreen mac they actually don't need to do it. The way to do it is to manipulate the way people use PCs, Macintoshes. And that's because they already know that the people have moved to the devices. The devices are selling like hotcakes. How do you get people to actually reinvest in computing? And that is by having a, a, a uniform chip, which is the people who ha already have the uh, iOS devices will then look at the computers and go, wow, it's the same. It looks the same. It makes sense. It's that backwards compatibility that's going to do it for Apple. It's very clever. And I think, it, yep. you know what, there's been a lot of pro users who've been bitching for many years saying, we're getting forgotten. Trust me, 
the pro user thing is coming back once they release these upgraded iMacs next year with 32 gigabytes of ram and they release a mac pro with 32 gig and the mac one and then you've got the ipad with 16 gigs sitting there the pro mm. there's your pro stuff and yeah yeah it's coming it, it, it's it's happening it's coming and i think it'll be and i want your thoughts on this in a minute as well but it'll be interesting to see what does actually happen um with yeah with i've lost my train of thought because there's a good question here from scott so sm borthwick's asked about app prices and what's going to happen with the app architecture and infrastructure once we actually go to having this desktop mobile hybrid because i guess the one of the biggest differences for creators that was my point i wanted to find out yeah for, for a creator what why apple don't like music because they have not mentioned music in any of their announcements for the last two years but anyway we'll come back to that but what do you think is going to happen with the apps are we going to see mobile apps increase in price desktop apps decrease in price are they going to hit somewhere in between if they're a universal app yeah i believe that i reckon they're going for an in-between uh, look, because, you know, if anyone who's, you know, used Apple for a long time, we had in the app store the race to the bottom. So, and, mm. and mainly was with games. So it started with games, like your Candy Crush. You download the game for free. You buy your coins. You buy all the stuff, the, the in-app purchases. That's where in-app purchases began. And then apps mm -hmm. became free. It was the race to the bottom. Everyone was racing to get their free stuff out. It, it very, sh for a short period of time, hit the m music and all the creativity apps. And they've tried subscription models. They mostly haven't worked for independent developers. Um, so and I think Apple's got the jump on Windows by merging this stuff and hitting... And Oh, sorry, I'll finish my train of thought. With the race to the bottom, apps have been climbing back up again. You're getting your Ravenscroft pianos on iOS, which are like 50 bucks Australian, you know. So we're already getting to that $20 average for really high quality apps. So it's yep. it's not much of a stretch to bring down the Mac apps and bring them halfway. Maybe, the, and Apple have already, remember this too, with developers, they've started to roll out plans for developers with the 30% that they're earning. And now they're rolling out these little mini plans. If you earn a certain amount, they'll give you a, a little bit more percentage like so they're gonna i think they're gonna have a tiered system and introduce this to developers so if you jump on board and create apps for both for aos let's just call it that yeah. they'll give you a like little it. bit more money as an incentive as this tiered system to get developers on board i can see it yep. happening and it's just going to leave windows and intel absolutely in the dust they, they have the power. They control the store. They control how much revenue they take from developers. And we have WWDC around the corner with all this yeah. new hardware ready to just go, hey, devs, let's rock and roll. And yeah, and if you if you watch the the full announcement, which I did, you, you don't have to because Jade and I did, so we can tell you about it. But they had developers in there, and they had you know Terry from LumaFusion, and they had a bunch of other folks from these medium. I wouldn't they're not the big app developers, but they're clearly aligning themselves with these app developers that are super passionate, that are going to be the front runners and going to be the leaders in this space. So it will be really interesting to see. What happens with that with LumaFusion? Uh, now that, that they were the first ones kind of to jump on the Mac M1, so they've they've really been in bed with Apple, if you want to call it that. But they've really been focused on being the front runners with this, and it's paid off because if you look at the 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 videos or the the announcements a year ago, it was all about Adobe Premiere, and there was this Adobe Premiere elements and clips and things, and every time Apple showed something to do with video editing, it had Adobe on it. Apple and Adobe don't get along anymore. LumaFusion have jumped in and said, hey, Apple, we'll, we'll work with you. And now everything that's related to creators is showing LumaFusion, which I love because I love LumaFusion and I love the company behind it, LumaTouch. They do really good work. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting stuff. And, yeah, what, do you want to talk to what, uh, what, they're, what they're talking about there and some of the new updates and features? Sure. Well, yeah, as you're mentioning it, let's bring it up here. I think I can make it a little bit bigger. So Luma Touch released a uh, little blurb here. Some exciting new Luma Fusion features were, pre uh, were previewed during Apple's spring loaded event today. And we talked about this, I think, in Clubhouse. I noticed the little graphic images and here they are there. It was like, look at that. Look at that image. Something looks different. Look at those little time bars down there. Everything looks a little bit mm. different there. So uh, Luma Fusion uh, already on the case it seems, and um, let's go back here. Uh, so they're uh, they're talking about multicam sync, create create clips with automatic time code for audio sync for real time shot selection and switching footage and multiple camera sources in your edit. 
um, edit directly from an external hard drive trying to manage huge amounts of data on your ipad's limited storage it's about to get a whole lot easier because the new ipads have thunderbolt 40 gig transfer thunderbolt drives. sensational scopes so you'll soon have more control over how your video looks with new video scopes interface accurately measures levels and colors in your video so you can dial in the perfect look for luma fusion and as it says here stay tuned for more announcements later in the year and strap in for an exciting summer man mm. there's going to be a lot of stuff happening with that and don't think because like they haven't mentioned audio there that there ain't going to be a lot mm. of audio happening because you mentioned i uh, just want to we'll, we'll come back to luma for a second you mentioned about how apple's neglected audio music creators mm. that's going to change I think mm. we're at the point where they know, they can see how many um, audio uh, interfaces are flying out the door, how many USB Cs and all these K connectors are flying yep. out the door. They know it's happening. Um, and the iPads just haven't had the power to be able to, for them to really push the upgrades that they need to. And you know th yep. th they want to do this. So I think uh, WWDC is going to be the place where it happens this year, finally, definitely. Yeah, and, and look, I think the video is definitely the new coolness, like video and live streaming and blogging and like YouTube content is where it's at and has been for the last two years. So it's not surprising that Apple are heavily focused on video editing, video creation. The fact that they spent five minutes on the last, uh, on the, the update event, telling me about how I can use my iPad Pro to actually shoot the video. And I keep going back to the fact that I don't know anyone who actually shoots video on their iPad Pro. Yeah. They may edit it on their iPad Pro, but no one's carrying an iPad Pro around and putting it on a giant <laughs> giant stand on top of a tripod and risking a $2,000 bit of kit just so that they can use the camera on that thing because the cameras are good, but they're not as good as the iPhone cameras or haven't been in the past. And it's just not a practical way to do it. But what they're actually saying is that, that they're really trying to say, hey, this can be your one device. And it is a good thing because the, the one thing I saw with this event is that Apple took a very big switch from consumption to production. So if you look at a lot of their other updates and other events, it's been very much about consumption of, hey, you can watch videos on this display. Hey, you can listen to music. Hey, you can listen to podcasts. And we hadn't had anything for the pros. This is This is a glimpse, as you say, into the future of saying, hey, we know that content created by individuals is exploding. And if you want to be a content creator, forget your, your high-end, you know, $5,000 PCs and digital SLRs. You can just carry around an iPhone in your pocket, an iPad Pro in your backpack, and you can have that full suite of content creation there ready to go. So you're right. I think audio will be the next thing because they'll people will very quickly realize that the audio quality of your three studio quality microphones on your ipad pro is okay but it's not going to cut it so the next step will be ah, oh, okay i've got these great cameras i've got this great processing power to do my editing how do i get pro level audio into those devices so that i can actually add those to my video projects and that's where the pivot back to audio is going to happen as part of video so i think it'll be less about music more about audio for video but music's going to benefit with it along the way yeah definitely um and you, you got to remember too apple collect a lot of statistics on us users right their their user stats they you know it's that's it, everything they mentioned you know what people as customer sat is and all these details so they realize too that we are growing with the devices there, there's you know, so people have had these devices for a long time now. Not everybody is your basic consumer anymore. People are starting to understand how they work. Over the pandemic, people have actually picked up these devices and gone, oh, I can make music with this. I've got nothing else to do, right? So uh, people are growing with the devices. So people who yep. are classed as amateur, maybe, are becoming pro. Yep. So this is why they're going to reinvigorate Pro because Pro has got a whole new meaning. It wouldn't surprise me if Tim Cook comes out and opens with what is a Pro user and yeah. defines we've got a new echelon of people who've moved up um, during the last 12 months who are now you know, getting into this Pro era, working from home who weren't working from home before. So they've had th this M1 chip has been the perfect opportunity for them to move along with that. I know... I can, Absolutely. I can see, um, I just want to touch on, so Andy's putting in a bunch of stuff here. 
Uh, so obviously Andy does repairs and stuff, and you know mm. this is a this is a, a sticking point with a lot of repair people. Uh, I forget his name, the guy I watch on YouTube who does. Yeah, what is that guy's um, name? I'm... Oh god, I can't think of it. But he someone will, someone will know. He it. fucking swears a lot too, and he's always pissed off. He's been in, like um, in all the courts and stuff fighting against it. So yeah, it's true. Uh, they're they're making it increasingly harder to repair yep. items. But let's be honest, with devices, it's not only Apple. <laughs> Samsung are doing the same thing. You can't open their devices yeah. as well. Like uh, every, and soon they're going to have like folding phones for some reason. Uh, yeah, Lewis, <laughs> exactly. Thanks for uh, guys in the chat. So the, uh, try repairing a folding phone, you know. Mm. Um, but that's all, nothing's really changed there. Apple's always been that way. I don't think that it's a big change to their model. Yeah, and I think that there is definitely a look. And I was there; I was right there with you, like waving my fist in the air because I used to love the component aspect of building a PC. I've built plenty of PCs in my time, and I loved you know, going. You choose your mainboard, you choose your RAM, you choose your processor, you choose your case, you work out what graphics card you need, and you know that if you choose correctly, if you need to upgrade your graphics card, you just whip it out and stick a new one in. If you want to go from sixteen to thirty-two gig of RAM, if you've set yourself up properly and you've got enough channels on your motherboard then you just go out and buy yourself another 16 gig kit shove it in and you've got double the ram so i come from that world and i very i i go i, I sit on the fence like i said at the start i have a sore ass because i sit on fences a lot because i do i agree with the right to repair and i don't like when companies go out of their way to inhibit your ability to repair their devices yeah but since the system on a chip has come and the m1 is here it, it's had to change my view because it it is. It's a consumer device. But the difference is it's now, it's like a fridge. Like you're never going to go and update the components of your fridge or your washing machine or your microwave. Some people do, but it's you've got to be pretty high end to fix that sort of stuff. PCs were always like the old car. They were the, the old Mustang that you'd have in the garage that you go, oh, it needs a new carburetor. I'll whip that one out and put a new one in. PCs are now, or Macs in particular, are now like a Tesla. Like you ain't getting under the bottom of that thing because you won't know what you're doing. And it's built to be locked down and that only the professionals can get in there and do anything with it. Do I agree with that in every respect? No. Is it the reality of the future? Yes. So it's kind of like a lot of businesses. You can get stuck in the past of what it used to be and get nostalgic about what it was in the past. Or you can say, what are we moving into? What's the future going to actually hold? So... I, again, because I'm a fence sitter, I, I, I'm in both camps. I'm like, I would love to be in the old world, but we're not. And this seems to be working. Uh, you only have to look over at Intel and see what they're doing, and they're just stumbling over their own shoelaces right now oh, to see what's not working. They're gone. Yeah. They are done. Um, as Thomas uh, uh, Rochelle has put in here too, like it, this isn't new. Like since uh, It's really been since uh, yeah. 2013, since they've been shutting down their devices. It's not a new thing. Mm. But then, like on the other side too, and I'm not, I'm not, I agree with you completely. Like, you know, shutting the whole system down is a sore point. But at the same time, yep. if you're spending two, like it's going to cost me $2,699 for the iPad Pro that I'm going to get, right? I'd have to be an absolute fuckhead to not get Apple Care, mm. right? So if, you, if you're spending that much money on a device and you're not getting Apple Care, that's, that's your, your safety net. That's Because yep. how much is it going to cost to take it to a repair shop? Around the same price as Apple Care, you know? And I can't tell you how many devices Apple have given me when I've taken something in and something's gone wrong and they've gone, you know, here's a here's a brand new second hand or refurbished device. It's happened so many times. So there still is that as well. So they're not complete Nazis <laughs> on the same token. There's still a lot of muggles, we'll call them that, the people who have <laughs> these devices who have don't use them for barely anything apart from texting and sending email, you know? They're the majority of people who end up in the Apple store going, it doesn't work, right? So there's a lot of those people. And, and, and you know, they don't buy Apple Care, They don't think about it. They, they're just using it for basic needs. So, you know, th there are things that like Apple Care yeah. that can get you through that. Yeah, it's true. And I think your point there is good. And I tried to make the point in the show I did today, which is that 
there's people that get really angry about this stuff. And again, like technology and creativity and creating music and video and all the things we do is supposed to be enjoyable. It's supposed to be fun. If you're getting so angry about the greediness of a billion trillion dollar company that's creating these things to help you create, then don't use them. Uh, like at the end of the day, you actually have the choice to not. And I think people are, uh, miss miss that sometimes. And again, I'm not, not being critical. You're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to not like the business practice of a company, but how about instead of spending your time worrying about like the people that come into yours and my chats on a regular basis and just walk in and they're like, Apple sucks, Mac sucks, you're you're just fans, you're just like drinking the Kool-Aid. It's like, okay, then if you don't need it. And and your story there about someone going in and saying, Oh, I think it's not working. It's like and people will say to me, Why would I buy why would I spend a thousand dollars on an iPhone when for two hundred dollars I can get an Android phone? I'm like, you wouldn't. You've answered your own question. You wouldn't. I would. Why? Because we have freedom of choice and I choose to because I like iPhones and I like the iOS infrastructure because I can use it to create music. Android, much harder to create music. So I will pay a 400, 500% premium to have a device that can help me make music because it's what I want to do. So yeah, the, the people get caught up in the whole, oh, businesses are evil. The other thing, don't forget that Apple are actually the only major company coming out right now that's saying anything about the environment, anything about the actual product, the things used in their products. They've got the big thing that and, you, know, you can say, oh, it's just media speak, it's just hype. But they're saying we're going to be carbon neutral on every product we produce by 2030. And they're implementing recycling programs and all of their offices and all their manufacturing is already carbon neutral. Yeah, you can talk about their practices in some other countries that they don't treat their people the best way, and I agree with that too, but they're, they're trying, I guess. And I think uh, for someone who's I've worked for big companies in the past, and I think people just think everyone and everything that any big company ever does is evil, and they're always wrong, and then they go and buy the products anyway. So what can you say? Yeah, and look, uh, for the argument too of uh, you know things not being upgradable and stuff like that, and it, it's, it's out of... It's out of date within, you know, so many years. So does a fucking everything. Fucking televisions, fucking toasters, yeah. fucking everything you can think of is disposable shit these days. It's not just Apple. We live in a disposable community where people just throw shit. Look, if that wasn't the case, you wouldn't have Black Friday every year with a bunch of people queuing up to punch each other in the head over a fucking TV that's going to be obsolete within a year and they saved 30 bucks on it. You know, this is the reality of, of what people, uh, you know, uh, they're singling out like one company and Robert oh, Apple's really fucked with this. It's it's everything. Every single thing is obsolete these days. A computer, a Windows computer with all the specs maxed out, you buy it, you get it home, <coughs> obsolete. That's just the way we are. We are living in a disposable uh, community. It just, yeah. that's our world. And I, and I think that because of that, it's more important than ever that yeah, companies actually have proper ways to recycle and to you know, re reuse their products. And the more premium you buy, like it's diminishing returns. If you've ever, like, I, for the longest time, I bought crap TVs. So I would buy the the TX and the Sonics and, you know, the ones, the crap ones you get at Target or Kmart or, or Dick Smith back in the day here in Australia or, I don't know, Best Buy or whatever it would be in the US or other places. And you, you go, wow, I got a great deal on this TV. If I bought the Panasonic or the Samsung, it would have been $2,000 and I got this for 800 But you know how long those things last? About two or three years. I've had my current panel. I had a, a Samsung Plasma for 10 years that was rock solid. And eventually I sold that to some dude for a hundred bucks and he's probably still using it to this day in his, his rec room. And then I bought a Panasonic 60 inch LED and I've had that for seven years. So if you buy a premium product, it's going to last longer. And it's the same with my iPhone. My iPhone 6S is still going and it still runs the latest iOS. So a lot of people are like, oh, Apple, they just update everything all the time. Like you can still use a 6S, a 7, an 8, a 10, an 11, a 12, all on the same iOS. You try to do that with Android. You try to do that with your jelly beans and your fruit cups and your other things. It's just not going to work. So the lower end gear, you've got to look at the economy of scale with this and go, hey, if I spend $1,000 on a phone, it lasts me five years and I know it's going to still be going after that. Or if I spend... $400 on a phone that lasts me a year and I'm buying a new phone every year for $400, you're spending more money. People don't look at the long-term, not everyone, but some people don't look at the long-term investment of buying a quality product and it lasting you a longer period of time. Yeah. 
um and, and like anything like look at the new ipads everything that they announced at this event the main thing that they were talking about was all of the al uh, aluminum aluminium that was made to make these is all recycled yeah. the people missing it like it's yep. they've got to that point now and so how are they getting around the uh the terrible conditions of you know uh of people mining these minerals and stuff the beginning is they're trying to recycle what they're made of. So, yep. and I'm not like sticking it, defending them 100% because we're going to move on. No. Before we do, I just want to cover this. So, we'll move on to something else. Um, let's touch on this. Where are we? Uh, small. Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro are coming to iPad. Announcement at WWDC. They will be subscription based. What are your thoughts on <laughs> subscription based? Is it happening? <sighs> I hope not, uh, but I fear it is. The <sighs> They they would be looking sideways. The thing with this is that they would be looking at Adobe and they would be looking at what they've been doing and with their subscription model and how well that's worked for them. And they'll be looking at things like um, what's the Pro Tools and looking at the subscription model. So they know that the pro market that they're targeting with this are subscription people. They've been forced to do it, but they are used to it. Yeah. So if you're a pro level creator and you're currently paying your thirty or your forty dollars a month to Adobe for the Adobe Creative Suite. And then you could actually pay, say you go, oh, I've actually really always wanted to just use Logic and Final Cut and you pay what would be realistic. So say there's a pro package, Apple like things like $14.99. So let's say it's $14.99 a month uh, instead of your $39 you're paying for Premiere Pro and, and Photoshop. And all you do, all you want to do is cut video and do audio. So you get Logic and Final Cut. That's a pretty compelling proposition for a pro level creator. Now, for someone like me who doesn't currently use Final Cut Pro or Logic, would I pay a subscription fee to use them? Probably not, because I think it would be overkill. And But would I pay a once-off fee just to have them there of $100 or $200? Maybe. I'd be more inclined. But I'm, I'm more interested in your view, but also of the folks that are watching here live or on the replay. So, yeah, let, let us know. If, if there was a subscription model for a pro-level apps in I, on an iPad, would you pay for them? Would you pay the subscription? Look, people know that I worked for Apple for a time as a, in a genius uh, bar. Um, I have friends who work at Apple. The word I've heard, <laughs> the word I've heard is it, w it will be a subscription, especially like Logic, right? And the way they're going to do it. Now, remembering this, right? So that recently they released Apple One, which they merged yep. all of their services together. Now, I had Apple TV already for a year, which I got free for buying a new purchase. And anybody who's upgraded to Apple One will have seen the same thing as I'm getting. When I pay my Apple One each month, which is in Australia, what is it, $49 for everything that I get, I mm. then get a $7.95 refund from the Apple TV that they gave me for free <laughs> for a year back. Yeah. And the way they're going to do the subscription for um, uh, Logic for the Mac and make it all work together, the first year uh, you're going to uh, it'll be a period of time that you're going to get for free to cover the cost of the the Mac uh, Logic as they merge them. Mm. So you'll get a period of time that'll be free if you're an existing Logic user on Mac OS. That's what somebody's told me, and that makes sense. Um, because mm. let's let's be honest, Apple are moving to more of a services model. And if you if you don't think the subscription's coming, check your head because they just announced Apple Podcast subscription. So they're clearly moving to a subscription model with um, podcasts, and we can touch on that in a second. So because mm. that is a thing, and I know people are scratching their heads, going, "Why would I pay for podcasts?" There is yeah. a reason for that too. So I think this this uh, model is a way to uh, th this is happening. I don't I don't think it's going to happen with all the stuff. Uh, it's probably look. It could happen with um, uh, uh, Final Cut Pro as well. If you've already paid for it, they're going to give you an introductory kind of free thing. Mm. Apple work like that. They do. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we, I mean, we've seen that. You get the 90-day free trial. Was it 90 days? It's a long time, isn't it, with Logic and with Final Cut yep. at the moment on the Mac? And then it's, what, $200 to buy or something like that. So, yeah, it would be. And I think Tom Rochelle said here in the chat that it would be a bit of a, a bit of a uh, yeah left hook to the head if you had already paid all that. And then you're like, oh, now you've got to pay a subscription. So, yeah, because I think ideally what people wanted to hear, I think if you, if you own these products right now, you just want to hear that, hey, you can use them on your iPad now. And they're a universal app. When they upgrade them to a universal app, you can use them on your iPad or your Mac, and everyone's happy. 
yeah, I, I don't see that happening because the development cost for Apple to put these apps that they would have to put into these apps, they'll have to repay somehow. So, yeah, I, I, ideally, it would just be a one-off payment. And I see a lot of people saying, yeah, I'd, I'd go a one-off payment, but I'm not getting another subscription. And I, every time I say that, I then look at my credit card <laughs> statement every month and all the subscriptions I have and the ones that I've added and I go, well, clearly I'm saying one thing and I'm doing another. Yeah. And I do fear that a lot of us are in that same boat. And it isn't it necessary evil? I don't know. And, and you've talked about it. You, you've, you've convinced me to do a couple of things. There's some things you can do with subscriptions to help out. One is to, for goodness sake, put a reminder on when you actually start a subscription. Make That's sure right. that you can, make sure that you know when it's going to, because it's not that hard. They, they used to make it really hard. These days you can go in and do it. And the other thing is only subscribe through your Apple ID on an Apple device if you're using Apple devices, because then you get that one-stop shop control over everything. So I'm a sports fan here in Australia and there's a, a service called KO where I can watch all the cricket and the football and the ice hockey and the basketball everything I want to watch is all in one place so but I don't subscribe to that all the time because sometimes it's off season for the sports that I like so I unsubscribe to it what I've worked out now is every time I resubscribe for a month I cancel immediately so I subscribe and I cancel because what almost every subscription does and check the subscription first is it lets you then have the rest of that time. It doesn't cancel immediately. Yeah. It says, Oh, okay, we've canceled it. You'll be able to use it until the date. So then it's an opt in instead of an opt out. I think the thing people get caught at is the lazy tax that you pay with the whole, Oh, I can't be bothered to opt out. So I'll pay another $12 for Netflix and I can't be bothered opting out. I'll pay another $10 for Hulu. You just get all these lazy tax payments that you make. If, you take that one extra step to cancel your subscription. As soon as you subscribe, the worst thing that's going to happen is you'll go to watch something and it'll be like, oh, you can't watch this now because you've unsubscribed. You go resubscribe and you're back in. Yeah. Plus, you won't pay for any days in between. So if you don't watch something for a week and your subscription's expired, you restart it, then you're only paying from when you resubscribe. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that would work with software because obviously you don't want to do that. You're in Logic Pro and then you're like, oh, I just need to finally master this song. Oh, your subscription's ended and then you have to go and resubscribe. But I think with, a, with some management, you can do it. And I've been saying to you for a while, I think the ultimate app would be like a subscription manager app that just automates all this stuff for you that could actually help you say, you've got all these subscriptions happening, this one's expiring here, and it basically grabs you and says, Pete, you're about to pay another 10 bucks. Do you want to? And you just click a button that says no, and it goes off and does it for you. Probably a pipe dream, but would be cool. Yeah, look, Apple give you the tools to manage it yourself, folks. You've got a calendar app. Yep. You open the calendar app. You set, a, you set a new event. You set it for a year from or three months from whenever you get the subscription. You set two alarms, one for the day before, one for five hours before or two hours before, whatever. Yep. And you can't, like, kick yourself. There's no reason, you know, you see lots of people, like, going, oh, but I didn't realise. It's like, well, it's on you, man. Like, you know, yeah. what are you going to do? Blame the multi-billion dollar company because <laughs> you didn't remember when to pay your subscription? Like, uh, you know, there's that as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Personal accountability. Yeah. Sometimes we, uh, we, we forget that we are in control, that you are not actually being, as much as we think that we're being controlled by these major corporations, you still have the final say of what, what you do. Same with Facebook. I know you, you said at the start of every show, like, if you're on Facebook, don't know what to tell you. I, I use Facebook, but I understand why I'm using Facebook, and I understand exactly what Facebook are doing. I understand that it's my choice to use this free service. I understand that when I click those terms of service to say, I agree with all this stuff you're going to do. And then I agree that every time I get a creepy ad that seems to be tracking my behavior in other parts, it's because I've said yes to the cookies that they've enabled on my Amazon search. And now they're serving me an ad on Facebook and Instagram. I know all of that. I think when people use the things, but then complain about the things, but haven't done the five minutes of due diligence to work out that if a product is free, you are the product then I don't take you complaining. If you're completely informed about that and you still want to say, this is a crappy business model that I don't like, but I use it knowing these things, that's cool. The people that I think are, it's bad are those that are too uh, are ignorant to the impacts of this stuff. And I think the one thing businesses could do is a better job. And to be honest, Apple are probably the industry leaders in this, doing a better job of explaining to you 
what you're actually giving up. So Apple integrated in iOS 14, the little dot. So if you're wondering what the little dot in your screen is when you're using an app, there's an orange dot that says your microphone's being used right now. There's a red dot saying your camera's being used right now. So Apple are actually saying, we want to tell you when apps are actually using your stuff. They've got that little pop-up that says enable microphone, enable camera. No app can use anything that you don't tell it to use. And that's the thing. People are like, hey, my phone's spying on me. It's like you told your phone to spy on you. You you said yes when it asked, can we spy on you? Can the Instagram app spy on you? You said yes, and then it started spying on you. It wasn't the other way around. So, yeah, I know. I, I get a little frustrated with that because I think you have an ultimate control over this stuff. You don't have to use Facebook. You don't have to use Instagram. You get to choose, people. It's your choice. What Pete's basically saying is, it's a fucking GPS! <laughs> Grow the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> it knows where you are. It knows what you're doing. It knows what you like. And I love it. I- I've said to you before, I'm like, could it serve me more relevant ads, please? Because I don't care what's happening on Married at First Sight tonight, but I do care that there's a cool new app that's on sale that I might want to check out. That's the difference. I yeah, want you to track the crap out of me and only sell to me stuff that I might actually buy. Thank you. You're carrying around <laughs> a tracking device, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> these conspiracy theorists, these m- absolute bonkers people. I'm not going to get a micro chip from a, an injection you don't need one stupid you've got an iphone in your pocket no. <laughs> really and that's the thing it's, it's the thing I, I relate this to to people that are like oh i'm being cheated i go to the casino and i know they're cheating me it's like they don't have to cheat you <laughs> their whole business model is designed around the fact that they have games set up that you cannot win yeah. so it's the same thing with this sort of thing it's like oh i think that they're doing all this nefarious stuff yeah but they're just doing the stuff they're telling you that they're doing. They're not doing additional, or some of them probably are, but most of them are not because they don't have to. Yeah. They've got billion dollar business models that work just because you tap a button that says, I would like this for free. So why would they then go and do stuff that they could potentially get shut down, sent to jail, fine millions of dollars? Again, I'm sure some of them are, but you know who probably are? The smaller companies. The bigger companies don't care. They're not going to bother doing all this nefarious stuff when their basic business model is making them so much money. It makes no sense. Yeah, re- at all. remember, free means, and I'll, I'll help you skip through reading the terms of service. Free means, yep. follow me. Here's mm. my info. I'm the product. That's the end of yep. the day. That you don't need to read the terms and conditions. That's it. You know, I uh, said this yep. before. Uh, back a few years ago, Amazon on April Fool's Day released a new terms of service, and in, within it, they they put, "We now own your soul," right? <laughs> Just for April Fool's Day, and they had the funny thing was without them even like pointing this out, they had the most people sign up to Amazon that particular day somehow. And then they told everybody, ha, ha, we now own your soul. And people got yeah. so fucking crazy about it. And it's like, they already you do own your soul. Like, and they've just changed the wording, stupid. Uh, so, all right, yeah. let's go over to subscriptions. We'll touch on this briefly. We've got a couple more things yeah. to work on. So subscriptions with podcasts. There is a reason why mm. it's happening. And I know a lot of people are saying, I'm not going to pay for a subscription for a podcast. This is happening because there's a lot of uh, big podcast companies. Let's just start with Twit. Uh, Leo Lepore's uh, uh, yep. uh, podcasting thing, many of you will be aware of it. They have just moved to their own model. So, and after many years of being having spoken ads in their podcast, which many podcasts have spoken ads, or they have ads which are pre-prepared. Because people have bitched and moaned saying, I don't want ads, I don't want ads, I don't want ads. Well, how are the companies going to make money from it? So what has happened? Twit, Twit TV, did I say Twitch earlier? Twit TV, so they've moved to their own model. They've actually mm. created their own space, which is a paid subscription. So now you can still watch Twit on YouTube or whatever, or on their normal service, and you'll get the ads read out. Or you can pay a subscription to skip all the ads. This is why Apple are creating this because some of the big podcasters are moving to this model to look after. It's like having a Patreon to move to a model where there's Mm -hmm. no ads. So here's what you're going to get with the the Apple podcast paying a subscription. No ads. Mm. So if you're quite happy with ads, you don't have to subscribe. That's not going to affect you in any way. But hey, if yep. you, you get really fucking angry and want to hit that forward button heaps of times and you're punching your screen, well, guess what? It's going to cost you maybe like five bucks a month to skip those. Yeah, That's it. <laughs> 
that yeah and look that as you say that's ex- that's a model that's existed for a long time like i i subscribe to podcasts already on patreon so you support them on patreon you get your separate rss feed and it's the exact same show but without the ads so i'm a huge simpsons fan i support the talking simpsons podcast those dudes are super funny and they have a good podcast i pay them five bucks a month so i get an extra show so i get additional shows and the shows i do listen to i don't get ads i pay youtube premium and the reason I am a YouTube premium subscriber is I get all the audio through YouTube music, just like Spotify and Apple music, but I also get ad free YouTube. And I like that because I watch a lot of YouTube. I do it for research. I do it for pleasure. I do it for a whole bunch of reasons and I don't have to have the ads. So it really does like all this Apple podcasting is doing is Apple having a go at setting up a subscription model that's doing the same as Patreon, that's doing the same as YouTube channel membership, that's doing the same as every other subscription model out there. And it's actually super simple. When you're paying for stuff, you're either buying the product or you're watching ads so that the person gets paid through a third party advertiser. Same on YouTube. There are some of you watching this YouTube stream on Jay's channel right now, and you may have seen an ad at the start of this stream. And you may see another ad at the end of the stream. And you may see an ad in the middle of the replay. So that's how Jade is actually making revenue from this stream. Or you may be a YouTube premium subscriber. You get no ads, but a little tiny chunk of your monthly subscription goes to Jade. That's just how it works. So you're either paying for the thing or you are watching an ad and you're, you are then the product. You're the product because you're watching an ad and then the third party company wants you to watch that ad and it's as simple as that. So free, absolutely free, is rarer these days. It still exists, but most of the time, if it's free, you're in some way the product. Yep, absolutely. And Doug's just said, get out of my room, star. Well, you know what, Doug? <laughs> oh, my camera's not there. There we are. There we both are. <laughs> We're both here with Doug right now. <laughs> I didn't test that out before doing it. Dance, Doug, dance. Dance, bitch. <laughs> Dance, <laughs> um, absolutely. Uh, oh, we're both in, I, I, we're both in Doug's room now. You're you're in uh, the hippies room before <laughs> yeah. I saw. Having, having a world tour. It's like I'm uh, back at your house again, Pete. <laughs> I know it's just it's creepy. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's talk about uh, one uh, one last thing. Then I just want to talk uh, a little thing. Then we'll spin the wheel. So because we've got some prizes to give away. Ooh, nice. iOS fourteen point five, and we all know that I. Fucking hate it! There's been a lot of issues with iOS 14, and the beta is in 14.5.8, but I can tell you all, next Tuesday, US time, will be the release of iOS 14.5, where you you will have these privacy features now in iOS, so you would have noticed a lot of your apps popping up with um, a certificate change, like an update with a certificate change, it's written on all of them. The, all the developers now updating their uh, apps to work with this new privacy change for iOS 14.5. That's all fine and dandy, I don't really give two fucks about that. What I give a shit about is, are they gonna fix the AUV3 plugins? Cause that's still my fucking head in. I want to check live now because uh, about every second day or so on my iPhone, my iPad for some reason has been fine, but my iPhone, I'll open up GarageBand and it will just, they'll just be gone. So uh, I want to see if, if I try live right now, is uh, is this going to be gone? Uh, let's see. Because this, this is a pain in the ass. I've, I've made videos on it. By the way, if, if you get it, you just need to turn your phone off and back on again yep. and they'll come back. Yep. But that is not great. When when you have to turn it off and on all the time, that is not great. So uh, dr- drum roll, please. Uh, you don't have your sound effects, uh, do you, Jade? No, you can't do a drum I roll can. here. I can. I can do a... Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, oh, there you <laughs> That's go. That's all I've got. Yeah. They're there, so it's fine. You can't see them because of the because uh, of the green screen. But uh, yeah. yes, they, they are actually there. But it is. It's a pain in the butt, and it's something so simple. I think you were mentioning the other day that this is Apple's infrastructure. This yep. is their system. They introduced AUV3 so that we could have app audio that would be loading one app, sideload an app inside another app. And now it doesn't work. And now it's just gone away. So it is ironic that, uh, yeah, the one thing they seem to be having trouble with. And 13.6. I don't remember having a single problem with. So I don't, this, this didn't exist. They updated it and it's like for, for every update they do that's bug fixes and stability improvements. It seems that they find additional bugs and additional unstable things that come in. And it's, it's the right, it's the nature, it's the reality of 
technology Absolutely. that you fix one thing and you break three. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it, sometimes it happens, but just fix it quicker. Uh, it, it's why I think that sometimes Apple don't care about us audio folks because they we, we seem to be the uh, the poor cousins. If it was a video issue, ooh, they would fix it immediately. It would be an overnight fix, but audio, they're like, eh, those, those, those people can wait. Yeah, well, there is hope because of these new devices that maybe they have fixed this because so those of you who don't know, just to explain fully, uh, with iOS 14, Apple broke the uh, the c container system within AUV3 plugins, which meant, uh, I think first off the bat was Audio Bus. They went in, altered their code to try and get a workaround for this. Then many other app developers have gone in to try and work around this. So there was save states were not being recorded initially with iOS 14. And now there's yeah. this consistent era uh, error that happens not for everybody because for some reason in the magical world of technology not everybody's affected for some reason but what happens you go to open garage band or open aum or anything where you insert an uh, auv3 plugin and they've just all disappeared but they're on your ipad yeah. so as pete said you need to just restart your ipad but this isn't good enough this is why i'm angry about it because you know we invest all this money into these devices and you want it to work because that's what they advertised it just works and here we are almost a year in almost a fucking year in and they still haven't fixed it it's just disgraceful they really i'm, I'm fingers crossed that it's fixed because it's disgraceful and so you know here's hoping we will know by tuesday next week yeah fingers, fingers crossed yeah. and yeah look I, I i don't come across as particularly angry pretty much ever but i i do still feel the same i have feelings i'm not quite a robot but yeah, I, I guess I, I'm more I'm more complacent, and I just go to the point where I'm now. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I expect my, my my level of expectations are so low that if things just work, I'm like I'm happy, and then when things don't work, I'm like ah, that's that's just par for the course. So uh, maybe I need to be angrier. I'm, I'm I'm getting old, so in my old age, I can start getting angrier and start yelling at more clouds. So that's my that's my aim. Be more like Clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh we'll the clubhouse <laughs> the clubhouse uh, good times all right so what we'll Ooh. do i've got one last kind of thing to ask you about but mm. before we do that let's do the wheel Ooh, you can the what wheel? you can join me on the wheel today so we have uh two codes to give away for a clev grand's slammer so let's Slam a I can't do the music today unfortunately and I don't think the ticking sound will work. Yeah, cool. Let's spin the wheel. So let's do this. We'll spin the yeah. wheel. So we got two I'll do, I'll do the tick. Two people are you going to do the ticks for me. <laughs> uh, let me okay. get up here where are we? Where's the, where's the wheel? I can't find the button to press the wheel. There it is. Spin the wheel. So good luck everybody. Uh, two copies of Slammer by Clove Grand. Let's your DJ. Spin that wheel. Nina has won, so congratulations. That's good to know. So Nina. Not, not that Nina. Not the Nina. No, not the that 99 Nina. Revolu's Nina. Not that Nina. That's pretty cool. So I'll just write that her was... down on my iPhone. Cool. Nina's won, so congrats, Nina. Let's do the other, other giveaway. And um, uh, spin the wheel. <laughs> Alexis Baritza. There you go. So nice. Alexis has one. Also, let's put that in. Cool. So con dinners. congrats and thanks for entering as usual to those people. Let's get back out of this screen and come back over here. There we are. All right. So what I want to talk about uh, as finally as we wrap up this show is reinvention. Because uh, most people will know that uh, I took a holiday recently and came over to Adelaide and hung out with you, and uh, we it was a really good time. You know, aside from you know coming on your show and getting to hang out and and get to know you after knowing you online for so many years and have these really cool chats about where we were going, like with our channels and stuff, you know. Um, and uh, recently you have kind of moved away from doing the studio Q&A, which you'd done for, yep. what, 69 <laughs> episodes, was it? Or 70 episodes? Yeah, I think I finished on 70 just to not be as creepy so no one could make jokes. But yeah, uh, about a year and a half of episodes. Yep. And so you, you, you put a put a bookend on it and you moved to this uh, a new show, which you know we, we talked about and kind of brainstormed mm. and came up together. Yep. Why is it important for people to 
take a look and take stock and reinvent themselves? Because sometimes you're not happy, because sometimes things are not working, because sometimes things have changed, because sometimes technology's moved on, because sometimes if you're engaging with viewers and, and customers and whatever it is within your life, your business, anywhere, anywhere else, they've changed. So it's important to be able to reinvent yourself because of the reasons that I rant about. So I don't get angry about too many things, but what I do get angry about is when people complain about things that they have control over. So the way I look at it is that you got a lot of stuff you can control, you got a heap of stuff you can influence, and then there's a giant buttload of stuff that is completely outside of your realms of control or influence. People seem to spend a lot of time worrying about the things they can't control. They spend a little bit of time on what they can control, but they forget about this whole thing that they can influence. So that's sort of my philosophy and what I've changed in myself over the last five years since I started doing YouTube. Uh, I started out with one idea in, in mind and the basic premise hasn't changed. I, I started out wanting to learn how to make music and then I quickly discovered that I wanted to help other people create, record and release their best music. So fundamentally, my values, my, comp, my the system that I've been working on hasn't changed. But over that time, a lot of other things have changed. So I think that for me, that the whole reinvention of that saying a Q and a show, Q and a show was good, but a lot of people that have been watching me for a lot of time have asked all their questions. And we're at the point now where they want a more in-depth conversation about creator-related topics. We can still do a little Q&A, which we do in the in the town hall show for people that are coming in that are fresh because there's always going to be new people joining. And I don't want to just snub and say, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm intermediate now. No beginners allowed. But it's just a, it, it's a better time. It's easier for me. It's more enjoyable. And I wasn't having fun. And the number one rule I say about doing anything in life, especially music, is if it's not fun, do something else. Yeah. And I know that's a pretty harsh way of saying it, but I say it to my children. They're playing a game and they're yelling at each other. I'm like, if that game you're playing is bringing you less joy than before you started, why are you doing it? And it's the same with music. I see people getting super angry, super grumpy, super pissed off. And I say... Are you actually having fun? Are you enjoying doing this? You seem really stressed. Uh, do, do you maybe need to consider whether this is the right thing for you or maybe you need to reinvent yourself and try something new? Just It's just worth considering. What do you think? Totally. Yeah, I'm absolutely with you 100% because um, as we going back to talking about Tim Cook and Apple, they're starting to realize that people have had these devices for a long time and people are upgrading their skills, their skill set. People are getting better at what they're doing. And exactly your point there, people have changed and they don't need a, a possibly a QA and a each week because they've got better along with you along the way. And your yep. model's changing as well. And look, I've had to reassess things too. I was doing a, a series on this show on mental health and well-being. And in the beginning, that was really good and well. Why? Because... Many of us were locked down and we were, felt like we were closed in and there was a sense of dread and such. So it, it felt like the right time to do something like that. But as the world is starting to get vaccinated and things are opening up and there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel, I decided as a model that I don't think it was actually a continued thing I need to do because it was actually mm. starting to bring people more down. But when we yep. first kicked it off, it was a space for people to be able to vent and get things out. And it was weighing heavy on me as well, carrying such a, a show, which is really heavy. Um, mm. And you've, you've got to take stock sometimes and, and look after your own health as well as fun. Like, you know, you talk about fun. I'm going to talk about from the health aspect of things. If you're yep. doing something that is fucking making you sick, <laughs> stop doing it. Go in the yeah. other direction. Like, And, and nobody's going to hate you for it. Nobody's going to be disappointed in it. People are going to um, be thankful that you, you have self-care and a changing direction because it helps other people change direction because sometimes we can, we can get stuck in a rut, you know, mm -hmm. and we just keep doing the same old, same old. And sometimes, a, that's the old thing, a change is as good as a holiday really is and and i think it's weird because there's a there's a bit of a paradox here that the two things that i see people do that gets them into trouble or that makes them less happy is that they keep doing the same thing and they're not willing to change they're not going to change it up they're just going to keep beating that dead horse or the old you know misquoted einstein quote is like you know insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result so there's a lot of people doing that and but then on the other side there's a lot of folks that are not 
consistently showing the resilience of trying something until they hit that point. So the reason I did 70 Q&A shows before I went, this isn't quite right. The reason you did like, what, seven or eight of your mental health shows and then you went, okay, that's done. If you did one and went, oh, these, that was a bit heavy, I'm going to stop right now, you wouldn't know. Like, and you always say, you know, try things three times because you won't know. It, the first time is always going to be a crap time of doing pretty much anything. Very few people have done something for the first time and went, that was awesome, and now I'm going to do that forever. So you do need to get the experience to do it. And uh, I've said it a bunch of times that, that people say to me, oh, Pete, you just give away everything on your YouTube channel for free, and you should put stuff behind paywalls, and you should put more content, like premium content. I'm like... 95% of people are not going to do what I say anyway. So they're not going to take the advice of trying new things or they're not going to take the advice and be resilient enough to do what you've done and do a show. What episode of how to app on iOS is this? 270? 260. And, and you've, you've obviously evolved and changed that over that time. You started doing it in 20 minutes. 20 minutes wasn't enough. So you expanded it out to 30 minutes. Now you're doing an hour and soon you'll be like the hippie. You'll be doing six hour live streams about <laughs> how to app on iOS. <laughs> Well, but I do have hippies background here. Yeah. I was going to say, I saw, I saw a metalhead cool hippie one. jump in the chat and I'm like, uh, yeah, you got the right background there for sure. <laughs> but yeah, but, but it is weird. I think that they're the two biggest things is like if you can know, have the resilience and have the, the ability to be consistent and try something a few times before you just poo-poo it or dismiss it. But also when you hit that wall and you know, you, you know yourself that it's not what you want to continue doing then have the the courage, I guess, to pivot and to change and to move with the times because otherwise you are, you're going to get left behind. But more than that, and more importantly, it's going to impact your mental health, your well-being and your general level of happiness. And hey, no one wants to do that. We're, we're creative for fun, for enjoyment, to make other people laugh, cry, swear, whatever. So it, you do need to be enjoying it. And if you're not, take stock. Think about it. Take a break. Doesn't have to be forever. Maybe take a week off. Do what Jade did. Come to Adelaide. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone come Everyone to Adelaide and have a beer with me. <laughs> have a beer with me. Uh, he, uh, welcome, Metalhead Hippie, who says, What keeps me happy is living by the one rule. Don't be a dick. And, yeah. And, uh, look, the other thing, too, um, I, I want to say on, you know, uh, listen to your gut, man. We have instincts for a reason. If your gut's telling you something's just not feeling right, just listen to it. It's normally right. Creating music, you know, the, when you know you're ignoring something or a bill you need to pay, <laughs> just listen to your gut and actually follow it and you can't really go wrong. It's true. Yeah, and, and don't be a dick is something that I live by. I, I, I phrase it at the end of every show slightly differently. I say be kind <laughs> to yourself and be kind to others because yep. I think that not being a dick to yourself is just as important as not being a dick to other people because there's plenty of people that are very much self-destructive in the way that they, they manage themselves and it's like self-care, looking after yourself is important. There's a reason, as I say, there's a reason why when you're on a plane it says fit your own oxygen mask before helping anyone else, including children, is that if you're not right, you can't even start helping other people be right. So look after yourself first, look after other people, and of course, keep creating music. 100%. Pete, what have you got coming up on the weekend? What have I got? Well, tomorrow we're kicking into our usual Your Music Live. So that's two hours at, uh, at the usual time slot. That's 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time and 7 a.m. for the early birds uh, on the east of Australia. So that is two hours of independent music uh, where we play little snippets of songs and, uh, yeah, we just enjoy and celebrate what is cool in the world of independent music and what you are creating. So if you've got a song you want to submit, we're about three weeks backlogged at the moment, so it won't be played this week, but... Uh, most likely, but submit it. It's at studiolivetoday.com slash YML. Uh, we've then got a happy hour, which I haven't decided yet. So if anyone's got any ideas for this week's happy hour, I'm, uh, I'm setting that up later today. So put that in the comments here or, uh, or down below. Uh, and then we've got uh, the Corrado Town Hall that we talked about before. And of course, Garage Band Weekly to finish off the weekend. So my weekend is full, but those are four shows that I absolutely love and adore. So as much as hard work they are to prepare, to set up and to execute, I absolutely love doing them. And uh, you can tune in live over on uh, the channel, Pete John Studio Live today. All the links are in the description to Pete Johns, his music. Make sure you listen to his music too, all right? Because, you know, not only does uh, myself and Pete try and create content for all you folks, we actually make music too. And funnily enough, not many people listen to it. <laughs> 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 you've, you've been subliminally playing it all through this uh, stream, all, so everyone should be uh, like, oh, who's that? <laughs> everyone who comes on, I normally play their music for 24 hours after the stream, 
Uh, so you get three dollars in your DistroKid account at some <laughs> stage. Um, that's something else I wanted to touch on, but we'll touch on another time because apparently Apple are increasing the money that we're making a little bit too from from streaming. But that's another story. What have I got coming up? I've got tomorrow Ooh. off on the channel, but then on the weekend, uh, as usual, if you are a Patreon over on my Patreon, which is from as little as a dollar a month, I do a three hour stream on Sunday here in Australia, which is Saturday for the rest of you around the world. And we, uh, I master people's songs who are Patreons. So if you are a Patreon, you can come into the stream, send me a track, I'll master it live on the, on the show. Uh, we're doing a little bit of a special this week on the Patreon talking about um, Luma Fusion. gonna do some, uh, some tips and tricks on how to use luma nice. and get some really tasty effects and stuff happening and then cool. as usual i'll be opening up for the happy hour with the opening hour and i'll be doing songs from my 2007 album gender optimized 2.0 live with a whole bunch of weird instruments around and i'm going to make a crazy version of everything so and uh during the week we got the usual apps and stuff the whole lot of cool apps coming out next week uh so Stay tuned for that because uh, Four Pockets have an awesome app that was just released today. That's awesome. That's very cool. My, uh, I, I went and had dinner with my parents last night and they, they, they normally watch my happy hour show. And because I opened for you last week, they actually hung around and they watched your entire show as well, Jade. And they said that they were super impressed. I was stoked. And, uh, enjoyed uh, every minute of, of your show as well so i think they'll be they'll probably be tuning in the hour early now now that they've had a chance to listen to you they'll be they'll be tuning in for that too Man, so. i was super stoked to see that to see your <laughs> folks in my chat it was, it was the greatest thing <laughs> Pete John's family's here, yes. <laughs> That's it, yeah, my folks, and probably the dog too, they're all watching. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, do do join Jade's Patreon, because again, like the, it is a fun time, and uh, and especially those those streams, uh, yeah, go a bit off the rails, but that's actually yeah. fun. Like, it, it is fun to be behind the scene. You think this is unfiltered, uh, yeah, wait till you see uh, wait till you see what goes on on Patreon. So uh, do do support Jade, a dollar a month. Like, if you're going to do a subscription anyway, you can, let, let's be honest, you're paying $12 for Netflix, you're probably paying $12 or $15, for Apple Music or Spotify, a dollar a month, I think you can swing that. Yeah, you, Go support you get Jay. twelve hours of streaming per month. Exactly. You know, which is yeah. uh, and it's it's full of oh swearing. <laughs> We do go off the rails pretty much every weekend. So. It is. It's full of fucking swearing. There you go. I, I did. Yes. I did promise people you'd get one f. We got one f bomb. Pete's off the fucking rails. It's. It's. We've gone to hell. The advertisers of led leaving by the droves. They're all done. Awesome. They're all finished. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us uh, this week. Uh, so. Next week, not sure. We've either got Jen Dean coming on the show for an interview too, or we have uh, someone very special from a, a really big metal band from the uh, 90s, which is going to be... We're not sure exactly, but the next month's kind of going to be a spotlight on female artists, so we're going to have a whole month of female artists. It's going to be really cool, so stick with the channel for that stuff. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We love all of you, your, your, your you know subscribers. We reached 15... 100 subscribers yesterday on the channel so thanks for all your support thanks for the patreons you guys rock and thank you pete for being you and being nice to me on the show as opposed Very welcome. to always a pleasure as opposed to clubhouse yeah, that's right. where you hate come on to, if you want to hear me uh, if you want to hear me bully jade uh, then you can come on to clubhouse and have a chat to us yeah, there right. no <laughs> untrue uh, but yes if I, I just get a little bit excited at times it's usually after i've been working all morning and then we're chatting and i'm out walking about so uh yes it's it's, it's all in good fun we all 100%. we all love each other all right guys take care but, uh, you know make mistakes they i nearly said make mistakes they make you happy what the hell? I mistakes just, make you happy. Dude, I just crossed all my catchphrases. Mistakes make you better. Do the things that make you happy. Be kind to yourselves and each other. We'll see you next time. Take care and Bob. Oh, I don't have my outro music ready. Let's do that. Professional stuff here. And see you later. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's playing now. See ya. Bye. See, my intro music's still not playing. <laughs> Professional! <laughs> we'll just go out with Pete's music. <laughs> no, let's stop it. There we go. Bye! Hit the like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Adios! And see you, Doug. <laughs> We're both here. <laughs> let's dance with Doug. <laughs>
<laughs> See you folks, take care, bye. I already did the draw, Russ. <laughs>